Hi, Minister. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us this morning. What brings you to Hamilton? I'm so happy to be in Hamilton, my first uh, chamber visit of 2024, visiting the Hamilton Chamber of Commerce. We had a very vibrant discussion here today with members from various sectors, healthcare, the university and college sector, as well as for-profit, not-for-profit organizations. A very fruitful discussion, lots of good ideas. Yeah, is this part of pre-budget talks? Very much so. We focused on issues that affect Hamilton families and businesses from housing to the green economy and affordability. And really, for federal government standpoint, we are building up towards the spring budget, and so this was very helpful. Yeah, it was all part of the fall economic statement as well, housing, green economy, all of these things. What is Hamilton talking about? What's the priority here? I would say the largest issue that I heard today was the need for additional housing. That's why the federal government is responding with $4 billion in the Housing uh, Rapid Accelerator Fund, as well as our national housing strategy. And in fact, before the holidays, we did announce $93.5 million from the accelerator fund for more housing for Hamilton. Yeah, that's an incredible thing and that we were talking about here a lot. I also want to ask about health care. What's the priority there for Hamilton? Well, of course, uh, our government has been very focused on ensuring we have health care agreements with all of the provinces, and we're also ensuring a new dental care benefit exists. And so this is going to ensure that families have access to dental care. It's a first of its kind in Canada, and so Hamilton families, as well as families across the country, will be able to benefit from that. And those budget talks are happening right across the province and, and even the country. What are you expecting them to prioritize? Across the country, in fact, uh, we have already initiated those consultations and I know uh, that they're very important in terms of focusing the mind on what we will deliver in the spring budget. Has anything surprised you about those talks so far? I guess it was your first one today, but anything surprised you about it? Well, we know that this is a time of economic pressure in this country with rising inflation and rising interest rates. And so Canadians are very focused, as are we, on affordability issues, housing, for example. And we will continue to ensure that we have supports available. We have increased old age security. We have put in place a dental benefit $10 a day child care, the Canada Child Benefit, which has lifted 500,000 children out of poverty. Those are the types of investments our government is very focused on, supporting Canadians through this economic time. So six months into this new role with the Treasury Board, what has been your biggest challenge so far? Well, it is very much an area where we need to maintain fiscal prudence. So I'm undertaking the first of its kind in this government's life of spending review. And we tabled $500 million in savings and refocused spending in the fall. And that is in areas such as outsourcing as well as executive travel. And I will be tabling the second tranche of the results of our spending review in the coming weeks. Uh, but all in all, we are going to be tabling about $15 billion over five years in savings and redirection towards our government's priorities as well as four billion dollars every year thereafter. So this is a very important measure to ensure that we are maintaining the fiscal health of our own home just as Canadians are across the country. That 15 billion dollars, is that coming from similar places like, like outsourcing? It's across the board. I wrote to ministers early in the summer and asked them uh, to put forward their plans for savings in each of their departments. I heard from all of the ministers and we will be making sure that we are saving funds where possible and redirecting those funds to our government's priorities. Uh, that is what Canadians expect of us, a strong sense of fiscal prudence as well as supporting Canadians during this difficult economic time. Yeah, of course, it is a difficult economic time. How does this $15 billion in saving translate to the everyday person? It is a matter of making sure that we show Canadians that we are being prudent with their dollars. Uh, so ensuring that Canadian taxpayers' dollars are well spent is one of my top priorities at the Treasury Board. 
and indeed it's not just in terms of the spending review that 15 billion dollars but I'm also tabling uh, legislation it's already its second reading uh, bill s6 in order to ensure that we're cutting red tape to make it easier for small businesses and other organizations to function. How so? What kind of red tape are we talking? Well, for example, the ability to file electronically instead of with paper-based forms. That's just one example. And that leads me to another uh, area that Treasury Board is really focused on, and that is digitization of government, mm -hmm. improving government services and the efficiency of government services across the board. That's within the mandate of Treasury Board, and indeed that will include uh, working with Minister Terry Beach, uh, who was recently appointed. Yeah, that, that sounds like a huge undertaking to be able to completely digitize this, this back end. How long are you expecting something like this to take? Well, you have to remember that we're dealing with multiple departments. Mm -hmm. uh, immigration comes to mind, for example. Uh, employment services comes to mind. We're, we interact with the Canadian public and where the efficiency of application forms is top of mind. So digitization is extremely important and in addition to that the use of new technologies. So in the fall I tabled uh, guidelines for the use of AI in the public service and those set forth the parameters for the use of artificial intelligence technologies uh, such as uh, chat GPT in the workplace. We have to be prudent but we also have to make sure that we are able to use new technologies prudently. Is this the workplace as in within government or as in within government mandated uh, industries? Well certainly we are starting within government and I will say that what we have seen is businesses across the country do take a look at what the federal government is doing before implementing their own policies and procedures and we very much hope that we are setting an example for others to follow. There's really no grounds to, to base something like that on. How do you go about writing that kind of legislation? Well, we did internal consultations uh, with the government departments, internal stakeholders, to find out how it was that they were wanting to use AI in the workplace. And of course, the broader cyber strategy of our government is also within Treasury Board. And we know that in the changing global strategic environment, we have to be extremely cognizant of the potential for cyber attacks. DDoS attacks and so uh, we're very much working on our uh, cyber mechanisms to maintain the cyber health of our government systems. So the overall thought there is essentially we can use AI in certain productive ways but maybe limiting it in other ways? Well making sure that we are abiding by existing laws. Privacy law comes to mind. We need to make sure that we are allowing the use of AI where possible and that we are cognizant of existing legal obligations. You're heading to your home riding of Oakville right after this, I understand. What are your constituents there talking to you about? Oakville is very similar in terms of the issues on the table to Hamilton and other areas across Ontario and the country, in fact. Uh, housing has been top of mind in Oakville. Uh, the green economy and making sure that we have uh, battery-powered uh, vehicles, the Ford plant comes to mind, uh, chargers to support the EV battery future, um, electric buses, as well as making sure that we are having accessible spaces in the use of those buses. So those are all areas where the federal government has made investments because we very much care not only about uh, EV batteries, but the ability to use those technologies into the future. The portal opened yesterday for Canadians to apply to bring their loved ones from Gaza to this country. Last night, the minister said there actually won't be a cap on how many visas are given out, as previously he had said. When was this change made? Uh, well, Ms. Minister Miller announced uh, the supports uh, for uh, Gazan refugees and Palestinian peoples coming uh, prior to the holidays. And I think what he said is that he will reevaluate once that 1,000 number is reached. Uh, of course, Canada supports the humanitarian ceasefire as it did in the vote before the United Nations, and we'll continue to offer supports where possible.
Is this something your constituents are asking you about? Almost definitely. Um, we want to make sure that we're doing whatever is possible. $60 million of humanitarian aid has already been committed from the federal government. Uh, but of course, the situation is very dire, and I will continue to advocate on behalf of my constituents in this regard. And I'd love to know how that program sort of ties in with your role in the Treasury Board, but specifically housing. Is this something that we're able to uh, to accommodate? And how do we go about making sure that everyone does have housing in well, that way? Well, just taking a step back, so what Treasury Board does mm -hmm. is it approves programs mm -hmm. that have been proposed in principle and approved in principle prior to getting to the Treasury Board. And so what we do is make sure that taxpayer dollars in the support of any program relating to immigration, relating to the green economy, uh, are, are using taxpayer dollars prudently and that's exactly what my role is. So whatever program is coming before Treasury Board, we have to do a risk analysis and make sure that taxpayer dollars are being used prudently. Is this a priority then, making sure there are housing supports for people coming from Gaza to Canada? The priority in terms of housing is across the board. We know that there is a housing crisis in this country. That's why Minister Fraser has been executing agreements with municipalities, including Hamilton, across this country. And uh, in addition to that, we have the National Housing uh, strategy, strategy, and that is uh, about $70 billion in its amount. So there are supports for housing across the board, but certainly Given the humanitarian crisis in Palestine and Gaza, we have to make sure that we are assisting where we can. And we're out of time. Is there anything else you'd like to mention? Well, one of the things that Treasury Board is also focused on and I've been working on is the elimination of racial discrimination and discrimination of all forms uh, in the public service. Uh, of course, as Treasury Board President, I am responsible for the public service. That's about 250,000 employees across the country. And so the issue of equality and non-discrimination is central. And I did announce the creation of a panel prior to the holidays that will be examining what practices and procedures we can put in place to ensure that we are supporting all groups within the public service and moving towards a workplace that is free from discrimination. Well, thank you for your time today, Minister. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care.